Hi, John with eTrailer. If you're ready to flat tow your Equinox, but you need a supplemental braking system, then check out what we installed today. This is the Demco Stay and Play Duo, and we installed it on our 2023 Chevrolet Equinox. Now, a supplemental braking system is going to apply the brakes on your towed vehicle when you hit the brakes on your RV. Uh, a system like the Stay and Play Duo is a permanent system that you install. It's a little bit more work to get it installed on your car, but uh, unlike a portable system, it's there when you need it with just a flip of a switch. Now the Stay and Play uh, is one of my favorite braking systems uh, that you can install on your vehicle. This is a proportional system and what that means is if you lightly apply the brakes on your RV, it's going to lightly apply the brakes on your Equinox uh, and vice versa. If you, if you hit the brakes hard on the RV, it's going to hit the brakes hard on your Equinox. Basically, it's going to keep these two vehicles um, in line with each other for a safe and efficient slowdown. Now, how it actually works is we've got a main operating unit that's working in conjunction with an accelerometer in your car, and it will physically apply the brake pedal on your Equinox when it needs to. Now, another nice feature of the Stay and Play Duo, uh, if you order it, is the wireless coach link. And what this is, is an LED light strip monitor that when you apply the brakes, this is going to light up. And it's going to let you know that your supplemental braking system is working properly. Or if it lights up and you don't have your foot on the brake, it's going to let you know uh, if something has gone wrong. Uh, installation for this side, super easy. If you can plug in to the cigarette lighter, you can install this. And when you're done flat towing, you'll simply unhook and with the flip of a switch, the system is off and you can drive your Equinox like normal. You don't have to worry about pulling out a portable system and then the next time you need it, setting it back up and going through the entire process again. This thing is here when you need it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Um, it's minimally invasive as far as installation goes. I mean, it's a big job and it's one of the, the big jobs that you're going to be doing. If you're doing it yourself, you're looking at a base plate, you need diode wiring, uh, you need a supplemental braking system. I recommend really doing all of this at the same time. It's such an involved process, but um, this is a great system. And if you plan on keeping your car for a while, it's a, it's a great option for you. If you have a lease vehicle, of course, there's other options like portable systems that we have available here. But if you wanna see how to install the Stay and Play Duo on your Equinox, stick around and we'll show you step by step. Now, before we get into our installation, we're gonna go ahead and state uh, that we're installing the supplemental braking system at the same time uh, that we've installed other components of flat towing like the base plate. That's the entire reason the front fascia is off. Uh, I recommend doing that. It's just going to make it easier for you to get all of the components on and then when you're finished we can reinstall the fascia. So um, the components with the supplemental braking system I've got installed in their locations and we're going to go through them uh, one by one as we hook them up and you'll see the location and the function of them. So we'll start on the front of the vehicle with the very first item. That's going to be our breakaway switch. And this gets mounted up to a base plate. Um, yours may be different on ours. We're going to mount it right here. It has two wires attached to it, yellow and black. We just routed that up with the other tow bar wiring up to our main operating unit, um, which also comes in the kit. Now, this we mounted on top of the fuse box. Uh, this is something that is a good location for it, um, but something to keep in mind is that you still need to make sure that you are able to access the fuses underneath. How we attached it uh, was just drilled holes into it and then uh, lock nuts and washers. So it's become part of the lid and when we go and install this later on we're going to keep in mind we need to leave a little bit of slack for the hoses and wiring to get underneath here. Now the other components in the supplemental braking system install here in the driver's foot well. Now we haven't, in, we haven't mounted them up just yet, just so you can see um, how we kind of routed the wires through the firewall. First thing you're looking at here is the G-Force controller. Um, this is going to be fed, those wires are fed through a grommet that's in the firewall and they're gonna lead outside to the main operating unit that we had mounted on top of the fuse panel. Um, included with that in this kit is going to be the wireless coach link and we're going to wire that up as well. Um, this just feeds signals up to your RV and lets you know when the brakes are applied or not. And then the last thing that is mounted where it's supposed to go, this is the brake cylinder that attaches to your brake pedal arm. 
this physically applies your brakes by pushing your pedal or pulling your pedal in. Um, so this is mounted where it's supposed to go. You have the cylinder that attaches to the brake pedal arm, uh, followed by a cable that attaches to the firewall. So we're going to get the G-Force mounted up so you can see how and where it mounts. We have our carpet pad back into position um, and we've reinstalled our kick panel loosely right now. Uh, this is where the G-Force controller is going to be mounted. The kit's going to come with a, a couple of screws to mount this up. Now there are rules when uh, mounting this as far as the position of it goes. It needs to be um, as level as possible because adjustments in the future are going to rely on whether or not it's up or down in this direction. Also, the wire should be pointing towards the front with your switch pointing towards the rear of the vehicle. Um, it needs to be in this specific orientation. It has accelerometers in here, and this actually uh, tells the main operating unit when your vehicle is slowing down. So we're going to get this mounted up. Now you need to know and make sure uh, on the back side back here that you don't screw into any wiring or any other uh, harnesses or sensors back here. So double check before you get this mounted up. Now we can turn our attention to the wireless coach link module. Now you're going to have two wires on that, a red and a white. Uh, the white's going to go to ground and we'll be connecting that in just a second here. The red is going to go to the cold side of the brake light switch. Basically that what that means is there's no signal uh, with the pedal depressed. Once you depress it, you're going to get a signal from it. Now, on the Equinox, you need a brake light switch bracket and wiring kit that's sold separately and it is needed if you want to have something like the wireless coach link or an LED notification on your windshield. That's a part of a different kit as well. So, we're going to connect these two. Uh, the wire is green, but that's just because I chose green as no uh, color specs on the, on the brake light switch. So. This is the cold side of the brake light switch. That's this green wire. Kit will include butt connectors. And zip ties. So once we make these connections, we can get these wires up out of the way. And we'll take the red wire from the coach link module and hook this up. Now your kit's also going to include a three-way butt connector. Um, so we'll attach the white wire from our module. Now the other two are going to attach to the white wire on our G-Force controller. And we can make that connection inside here. We ran all of the wires out. So we're just going to snip our white wire. on the G-Force controller and we'll put the three-way butt connector in line. Now as far as um, installation and electrical under the dash here, we're complete. So your kit's going to come with a hook and loop fastener that you can stick on the back of this. It's very light. Um, so you can stick that up out of the way and your kit's also going to include zip ties. So make sure all of these wires that are dangling down stay out of the way of the pedals uh, and get this securely attached. We'll come back in under the hood and uh, this is where we're going to be doing most of our electrical connections here. Just so I routed everything to one location to try to simplify this a little bit. So uh, this wiring harness right here is for our main operating unit. Uh, you're going to have four different colors on that. This is from our breakaway switch that was on the front of the vehicle. This wiring harness right here is coming from inside our passenger footwell. This is the G-Force controller wiring harness. And then we have our uh, tow bar wiring, the diode wiring that we installed previously on this vehicle. Um, and these are where we're going to be making most of our connections. We can start right now with the breakaway switch. This is on the front of the vehicle. We're going to connect uh, the black wire from the breakaway switch to the blue wire on our main operating unit. 
Now your kit does come with standard butt connectors. We're upgrading today to heat shrink butt connectors since this is under the hood and it's going to be exposed to the elements. Um, we're going to use these instead. We have these available here at E-Trailer or you can pick these up at automotive store or retail stores. Um, admittedly, it's not a whole lot of, of environment that it's going to be in, but something that's important like this, it's not a bad idea to spend a little bit more money and get the type that can keep the corrosion out. Okay, now the orange wire from the breakaway switch is going to get tied in line with the brown wire. This is going to be run up to the battery. This is going to be the power line for the main operating unit. So keep this extra wire for us and we'll just tie in, tie these two together and I've got a larger size butt connector that will accept both of those. And then the other side, I cut it long and we'll double it over. That way we can run this up to the included fuse holder that's in our kit and connect it to the battery. Just like all the other wires, I'm going to route this kind of out of the way. I like to do these installations, um, keeping it as clean as possible. Um, try to retain some of the factory look here. So this is the fuse holder that you're going to get in your kit, and it will come with the fuse not installed. Uh, this is a 20 amp fuse. And we're going to install that last, that way we don't have any uh, accidents and we pop the fuse. So I'll cut this right in the middle. I have a ring terminal, this will be included. So we have a few mounting options on the Equinox. Uh, the easiest one right now is going to be right here at the main connection on the battery. This is a 10 millimeter nut. Tighten that back down, make sure everything's tight. And we're gonna leave, like I said, the fuse out until the end. We'll just tuck this out of the way for now. Now the other two connections on the main operating unit are gonna connect with the G-Force controller. And we're just gonna simply match up colors, red and black to red and black. We'll cut these. Now continuing with connecting the same colors together, we're going to take the yellow and green from the G-Force controller and connect that to our diode wiring, yellow and green. So we'll do the same type of hookup that we did on the breakaway switch. We'll just double these up. and then reconnect them in line. Now our last connection is going to be the white wire from the G-Force controller. This is the ground. Now your kit's going to come with extra white wire and a ring terminal. And basically this is going to tie in with your ground wi wire on your diode wiring. So I'm going to run this to the battery and I'll use the wire from our kit to tie into that wire. So we've done this kit on different other, on different models before, and sometimes you have enough 
supplies to do it, and sometimes you have to source out extra wire. This was um, the nice thing about the Equinox. It seems like everything here is included. You don't really have to buy extras um, other than, say, upgrading to the heat shrink butt connectors. And we'll run this. Leave yourself enough wire uh, so you can hide it out of the way or if you need to move it in the future. And we'll connect it to the ring terminal that's included with our kit. And since we have a frame ground right here, we're going to use this location. With all of our connections made, we can use our heat source and shrink up the connectors. Now, if all of our connections made on the electrical side, we can insert the fuse into the fuse holder and we'll move on to the plumbing. As far as the plumbing connections on our supplemental braking system here, pretty straightforward uh, because we have an electric assist, it's not vacuum assisted back here. It's electric assist and the battery remains connected. So uh, in your kit you're going to get a check valve and we simply can either turn the check valve around that's on the main operating unit which can be pretty difficult. Um, in our case today I'm going to use the check valve that came in our kit and cut off a section of hose and we're just going to reverse it. And you can see the color. So we want the black facing towards the outside The other plumbing connection is going to be with the included quarter inch nylon tubing that comes in your kit. Now I ran this back to the firewall, the same location that we ran our uh, wires out for the G-Force controller. Now this is going to connect directly up to our main operating unit here. So you want to route your line and again you want to leave enough in case you ever need to get inside the fuse panel. And I'm using a razor knife to cut this. You want your connection to be clean and as even as possible, as flat as possible all the way around. This is a quick connect uh, fitting that's on the main operating unit. To connect it, you simply push in. You'll feel resistance and keep pushing until it stops like that. You can give it a tug to make sure. If you ever need to remove this for any reason, just push on the outside collar down and then pull the tube out. Now we're back inside the driver's side foot well. Uh, this is the other end of that quarter inch tubing that we just connected up. And uh, this is gonna connect here at this quick connect fitting on our brake cylinder. This works the same way with the outside collar and everything. So just leave yourself, once again, enough uh, line here for future repairs or just to get it, make sure it stays out of the way, get a clean cut on it, and insert it into the brake cylinder. Now with all of the connections made, it's a great time to test your system. Uh, that way if you have any problems, you can take care of it quickly and easily. So the easiest way to test it is actually to turn your unit on, and you're going to simply pull the breakaway switch, and your unit will activate. That was a look at the installation and some of the features of Demco Stay and Play Duo on our 2023 Chevrolet Equinox.